So measured numbers have a certain number of significant figures and measured number values also have a certain number of decimal places. Those all go back to the original precision of the measuring instrument. In general, the more, preci uh, more precise the measuring instrument is, the more decimal places it'll have and the more significant figures in the measured value as well. So this is a summary of those decimal places. You have a decimal and then you have the places after the decimal. The uh, first place after is the tenths place. We talked about that a lot. And then two places out is the hundredths place. But also on the other side of the decimal, there's the ones place and the tens place, hundreds, thousands. Um, those are also places, but um, these are the more commonly common decimal places. This is one decimal place out and two decimal places out. And we see those quite a bit in measurement. So um, values are, that are calculated using measurements um, have to be rounded. And uh, this is going to be based on the decimal places or the sig figs in the original measured values. So for instance, if you have this raw number from a calculator, 273.245. So this is the long number, and we want to round to two decimal places. So the decimal places um, are going to be the places after the decimal, which would be this two and the four, okay? So you uh, 273, those are all, keep all those. So we're going to keep the two and two decimal places represented by the two and the four. Um, you need to look at the number right after, the digit right after the, uh, the last place you're keeping, and that's a five. And so if it's five or greater, greater than or equal to five, that means you round up the previous digit. So the previous digit being a four, this 273.24 is going to be rounded up to 273.25. So instead of a four, it's rounded up to five um, because this is a five. And so if you have five, six, seven, eight, nine, the previous digit would be rounded up. So in the same number, uh, 273.245, if we want to get this rounded to two significant figures, that's a little bit of a different story. First, you have in the raw number value, there are five significant figures, one, two, three, actually six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the two and the seven would be two sig figs. And then this is a three, this three is, um, we only want two sig figs, so we got to get rid of that three. So we're looking at that three, and it is less than five. So instead of rounding up, you keep. You don't round down. You just keep the previous digit, which is a seven. So you're going to keep the two and the seven. And then you don't just get rid of the three. So it, just, it doesn't just become 27. Why? Because 27 is not the same as 273. What you do is you add a zero. So you add a zero to hold the place where that three was. And so this becomes 270 and it has two significant figures because remember that when you have a zero on the right, zero on the right is a trailing zero and those are never significant um, or those are not significant unless there's a decimal and there's no decimal there. So in calculations with significant figures, there's uh, two main types. You're either doing addition and subtraction, and um, the other type is multiplication division, okay, or that sign. And so uh, the more common is multiplication and division, which we've already done a bunch of in some earlier problems when we're doing conversions. And so to represent, um, the original precision of a measured value is the whole goal when you have a calculated answer. So a calculated answer is going to have a, you know, a lot of digits in there that we'd written earlier, but you can't keep all those digits because that would be too precise. It would be out to the thousands place or the ten thousands place or, um, you know, nine, nine decimal places out. No measuring instrument can measure that. So we need to represent the original precision of the number value, which goes back to the precision of that original measuring instrument. So your calculated answer um, uh, can be not more precise. It has to be as precise as the least, uh, the least precise measured value. Okay, so for addition and subtraction, your answer, you're looking at the decimal places in the original data values, and you need to go with the smallest or the lowest 
the least um, precise value. So for instance, you've got this addition, you've got 1.003 centimeters plus 0 0.2 centimeters plus 0 0.001 centimeters, and you add it all up and you get 1.204 centimeters. So since this was addition, um, addition, you're looking at decimal places, looking at decimal places of these numbers that went into this calculation. So this 1.003 has three places after the decimal, 3dp. This 0 0.2 has one place after the decimal, 1dp. And this 0 0.001 has three places after the decimal, 3dp. So you're looking for the smallest number, the lowest value, which would be this one, one decimal place. So that means your answer needs to have one decimal place. Let's actually erase some of that. Okay, your answer needs to have one decimal place, and that's where this ends up giving you this one decimal place is the two. And then looking at the digit right after it is a zero. Uh, when you have a number less than five, you keep the preceding digit, which is the two. So you keep this as 1.2, and that has one decimal place represented by that two. So for multiplication and division, your calculated answer you're looking at, and this is the most common is multiplication and division, is your calculated answer, um, you're looking at the sig figs in the original data values. And you need the original data values, you're going to look at, again, the least precise, the smallest number would be the least precise um, with the smallest number of sig figs. So for example, this calculation, this is all multiplication. And you get this uh, centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. You get the units of centimeters cubed. And um, you can see this is how many decimal places? This is seven decimal places out. Or um, there are four sig figs. OK, now this is not going to be our final answer. So we need to look at the number of sig figs in these original values that went into it. Four sig figs here, because those are captive zeros, and the one and three are significant one sig fig here because this is a leading zero and leading zeros are never significant. So these are also leading zeros and those are not significant. So what you have here for sig figs is just this, this is the two is one sig fig and just that one is the one sig fig. So you're going with the smallest number which is either one sig fig or one sig fig. Your answer needs to have one sig fig. Okay, so we're going to be looking at this one sig fig which is none of those zeros, none of these. And then you get to this one is your one sig fig. Look at the digit right after is a zero. Anything less than five means you keep your preceding digit, which is the two. So don't round down, don't round up, but keep that two. And so this answer is 0 0.002, and then you keep the units centimeters cubed. So uh, in summary, when you are rounding calculated answer values, the raw number on your calculator screen is not the final answer. So you are looking at either sig figs, um, that's for multiplication or division, or you're looking at decimal places. This is for addition or subtraction. Okay, so it depends on the type of calculation. And um, you're looking at those original data values, either the sig figs or the decimal places. So um, to round the answer, you are choosing how many sig figs or how many decimal places, and then the digit right after your determined sig figs or decimal places will determine whether you're going to round up or keep the preceding digit. Okay, so another review here, addition and subtraction, this, these operations you are looking at decimal places of the original values. So if this is this um, addition we're looking at here, you've got sorry, you've got uh, 3.59 grams. This is two decimal places here, and then this is 2.0, which is one decimal place. Your answer needs to have one decimal place. And so this is going to be represented by this one place after there, and that one decimal place is followed by a nine. So you need to round up to five, 
5.6, so from 5.59 to 5.6, and then keep the units grams, and that has one decimal place in the answer. It shows the lower value. For multiplication and division, that's the more common operation we're doing in calculations um, that we did in all of those preceding conversions. Uh, you are looking at sig figs. So this is uh, division here. So this um, is the raw answer. And you can see the units are grams over centimeters cubed. So the units don't cancel out. They don't disappear. But this is grams over centimeters cubed, which are units for density of a solid. We'll be looking at that in lab. Uh, next week. So this is um, the original data values are 3.59, that's three sig figs, and then 2.0. So this is a zero with a decimal, so this number has two sig figs. Use the lower value, so your answer needs to have the lower value or two sig figs. So looking at the two sig figs, this would be the one and the seven. The digit right after is a nine, so that's greater than five, so that means you're going to round up to 1.8 and then grams per centimeters cubed are what you're keeping this 